May 11, 2020. COVID-19 is devastating the United States. Four million infections, 75,000 deaths, 20 million people out of work. Outside hospitals, bodies pile up in refrigerated trailers as morgues overflow. And on the streets, protesters rail against lockdown measures. But at the Department of Health and Human Services in Washington, D.C., a counterstrike is in the works. In a conference room, Monsef Slawi watches as the room fills up with federal officials, political advisors, and army generals. Slawi's a retired drug industry executive whose career was born from tragedy. While growing up in Morocco, his six-month-old sister died from whooping cough. With better access to a vaccine, she could have been saved. Slawi went on to turn the pharmaceutical giant GlaxoSmithKline into the world's top vaccine maker. Now, he's about to get a new mission. A White House official starts the meeting. Mr. Slawi, how much have you been told? Just that you want me to run something like the Manhattan Project for the COVID-19 vaccine. Yes, we want to deploy the federal government's full resources to make a vaccine happen by the end of the year. You will be the chief advisor and lead on the science, and General Perna here will handle logistics. We're calling it Operation Warp Speed. Warp Speed? A political advisor responds. From Star Trek, you know, engage warp drive, Mr. Sulu. Uh, r- right. Look, I-, I don't care what it's called. I just want to save lives. But you need speed and safety. A vaccine no one trusts is useless. The FDA's vaccine chief interjects. They decide what drugs can and can't be used in the U.S., The FDA won't be easing its requirements on my watch. The vaccines still need to undergo full clinical trials. But we could save time if drug companies start producing doses while trials are underway. Slowey shakes his head. Drug companies won't mass produce vaccines that are still in trials. It's too risky. If the vaccine fails in trials, and that's not unusual, every dose would have to be discarded. They'd lose hundreds of millions of dollars. That's why Operation Warp Speed will supply $10 billion to cover the industry's costs, buy doses, build factories, secure supplies, do whatever it takes to get a viable vaccine, as fast as possible. Slowey smiles. With the U.S. government paying the bills and pre-ordering doses, drug companies won't need to fret about the financial risks. Okay, I'm in. But only if science sets the timetable here, not the presidential election. If there's any undue political interference, I will quit. Understood. There will be no interference. Four days later in the White House Rose Garden, Slowey, Operation Warp Speed's newly appointed chief advisor, joins President Trump before the cameras. Today, I want to update you on the next stage of this momentous medical initiative. It's called Operation Warp Speed. That means big and it means fast. A massive scientific, industrial, and logistical endeavor unlike anything our country has seen since the Manhattan Project. Backed by billions and with the full logistical might of the federal government at its disposal, Operation Warp Speed is about to turbocharge the vaccine race. But with an election looming, the vaccine makers are about to get caught in the political crossfire.